hi uh, welcome to the part 5 uh, for loops uh, session of uh, module uh, 3 of my python course uh, uh, for loops this uh, session is very uh, very important and this is very widely used uh, one of the tool uh, uh, while working on uh, python projects so the for loop is generic is a generic uh, sequence iterator in python so it can step through the items in any ordered sequence object and next the for statement works on uh, strings lists tuples and any other built-in iterables then the python for loop begins with a header line that specifies an assignment target or targets along with the object you want to step through the header is followed by a block of uh, normally indented statements that you want to repeat so now look at the structure of the python for loop when python runs a for loop it assigns the items in the sequence object to the target to the target one by one and executes the loop for each the the loop body typically use, uses the assignment target to refer to the current item in the sequence as though it were a cursor stepping through the sequence next the name used as a used as the assignment target in a for header line so this is our for header line is usually a variable in the scope where the first statement is coded if you look at the second example the first statement also supports an optional else block here it is which works exactly as it does in a while loop it is executed if the loop exits without running into a break a break statement so now uh, uh, let's uh, look at a for loop uh, that's a bit more sophisticated uh, than those who have seen uh, so far the next example that actually illustrates uh, the statement uh, nesting and the loop else clause in a for loop if you see this example clearly if you observe this example properly so here we have taken uh, a list a set of objects and a keys for uh, keys to search for now we have a for loop and then inside that you have a nested for loop okay these are header for header and then nested for header then inside that you have a one more nested if so then uh, for if we have used a break then we have used else for the nested for loop so this is what uh, is called as a sophisticated uh, uh, for loops so these kind of for loops are very much for loops with uh, a combination of if conditionals these are very much used uh, and useful uh, while working on uh, projects so now uh, uh, given a list of objects or items and a list of keys see here items and list of keys uh, uh, this code searches for each key in objects list and reports on the search outcome so next uh, the following is the built-in zip function allows us to use for loops to visit multiple sequences 
in parallel. So in basic operation, JIP takes one or more sequences as arguments and returns a series of tuples that pair up parallel items taken from those sequences. For example, in this case, S1 and S2 are two strings which are iterables. Now, JIP truncates result tuples at the length of the shortest sequence when the argument differ. Fine. Now, here we JIP together we jip together S1 and S2 to pick up, to pick out uh, characters in parallel. But the result has only as many tuples as the length of the shortest sequence. Let's jump into the Jupyter Notebook and let's explore our for loop and JIP and some other tools in there. So the basic uses of uh, for loop, let's define. So a for loop can step across any kind of sequence object, fine. Now the first example I have considered is just spell out my name, okay, spell out my name. So for keyword our target or loop variable membership operator and then a sequence object or iterable object or a string object so then print that alphabet that's our target or loop variable loop variable and then uh, just remove this default or So it's spelled each and every alphabet out of each. That's how you step inside a, some other sequence object using uh, our using our uh, iterator. That's a for loop. Now compute uh, the next example I have considered is compute the sum of all items. Compute the sum of all items in a list. So now let's take sum as 0 initially then again for x and then list of range of we have taken a, a, a generator object and then uh, uh, we used list type casting to convert the generator object into a list basically. Then we are stepping into that list and then one by one we are uh, attaching that list to the uh, summation so we will get a sum so if I increase to 9 you will get 36 okay that's how it works and the second example we have considered is compute the product of all items in a list same again we will do the same thing in spite of uh, uh, summation uh, summation Augmented assignment, we have done uh, uh, multiplication augmented assignment here. Fantastic. So I'll just uh, change the value to 9 and uh, explode. So 40,320, that's a huge number. So then uh, the second uh, thing is tuple assignment in for loops. So if you are iterating through a sequence of tuples, the loop target itself can actually be a tuple of targets. Okay, so basically, this is a tuple. This uh, uh, basically, this is not tuple. This is a list of tuples. So now, I want to. I I, I just make I just put my target uh, variables inside the tuple. So now, I can actually uh, get the tuples. And map it to this tuple. See, that's what happened here. Now, the third one is dictionary assignment in for loop. So, we'll take an example tuples in 
for loops also come in handy to iterate through the both keys and values in uh, dictionaries using the item method. So rather than looping through the keys and indexing to fetch the values manually. So that's what. So now what we'll do, we will take one dictionary which has key and value pair. So now you'll just use for loop key in D and then print key. So that's how you can actually use a dictionary in for loop also. It's called dictionary assignment in for loop. Uh, this is another, another way of doing and here we have list of tuples again and uh, a spec it, you can give an uh, target variable as both and after that you can uh, define it, it and uh, a dic a dif a allocate, assign that uh, target variable to the your tuple uh, variable and then you can print that. This is another way of doing this is called uh, it's, it's a manual assignment it's called manual assignment. So then we will move on to nested sequences. So if you see the nested sequences here, we have a uh, a tuple and a nested tuple inside it. So okay, and same you make your objects. These are our re reference variables, and these are our objects. So when I call A B C, you will get uh, the respective numbers. So here we can do the same thing. See. You have your for loop and then you have attached uh, a, a target uh, variables or in another way you can call it as a loop variable and then you have a list of uh, list of uh, tuples and you just want to print the you just want to print the uh, loop variables one by one so this is how you get it and then we have extended sequence assignment in for loops extended sequence assignment in for loops for this what we'll do is a sequence can be assigned to a more general set of names with a star name to collect so multiple items as we have discussed uh, all these things in uh, assignments uh, uh, assignments exam assignment session so now here this is uh, one target variable this is an this is a arbit arbitrary target variable this is a normal target variable so when you have a tuple of uh, objects inside it a tuple so obviously a takes the first one and as b is arbitrary it takes a list and then whichever is left at the end that will be taken by c so that's how you got a is one and then B it got a list and then C it got five so the same concept we can use it in for loop so you use that extended sequence assignment in for loop to make uh, okay then we have uh, nested for loops so nested for loops here our task is to write a code which searches for each key in the object list and reports on the search outcome so here we have items items is a list a set of objects and then we have tests tests is again uh, this is a list uh, and this list consists of uh, keys to search for and then we'll use for loop uh, fr keyword and then our loop variable our target as key and in and then tests is our sequence object then inside that once you get keys then you go for the item and items and then item is equal to keys so this is how actually you can use uh, nested uh, for loops so the next we will move on to even you can uh, the, this is the simplest uh, nested uh, for loop uh, i have created basically you start empty just a minute mm. you start empty and then 
scan for sequence so then common item find out the common item and add that uh, result to the end so that's what uh, that's how we found uh, we have uh, we have found the common uh, common uh, alphabets in uh, both the strings so then file scanners it is similar to that same application we have discussed uh, before so first thing is the first step is write a file that content contents into a string so i will write as file one the name of the file i'll give it as a file one and i'll open it uh, in uh, uh, w processing mo mode that means in a writing mode then i will add i will using a write method write method i will add shiva mahadeva into that file and next thing is the next thing to do is load a files contents into a string all at once you simply call the objects read method that's it so you, you again open it and then read it so now this is a normal way now if you want to read uh, letter by letter or simply character read by character by character then you get you just open the file and then use while uh, loop and using the condition you can read it so this is how we do it then we have for loop in spite of using while loop uh, we can use for loop uh, to do the same operation there is nothing much here what we have done what we have done we have taken for keyword then char is our uh, uh, loop variable loop variable and then in is membership operator then open is inbuilt function which makes uh, uh, which actually makes possible uh, to deal with the uh, files and then read is to read so now so obviously it reads each and every character in whatever we have written okay so then we are moving on to counter loops counter loops can be made uh, using for loop as well as while loop for loop is a single line you can it's it's easy so wrap a range of it wrap a range iterator in a list called to display its results all at once see it's and uh, list of range of 2 comma 6 and list of range of this is uh, using stepping up this is our step and this is start and then end which is not included in fact now ranges can also be non positive and non cascading if you want them to be so this is what a range of minus 5 to 5 as i have told you range is an generator object so you need some some other object or type conversion or iterable some other tool to make it into a normal value so here i have used a list type conversion to convert to convert uh, a generator object into a list so here also we have done the same thing here we have used minus one as a step then for loop force results from a range automatically it's the same thing you can apply and that's what i told you you have to use some iterable tool to make an a generator function into values so here uh, for and then i is loop variable in and then a range of three and print so this actually works as a counter for us this is a this is an another way to make a counter so again here i want to uh, see how many alphabets are there inside so i'll add one more and now we'll see 21 now 
then same thing for my name now changing lists so now we are it's a range we're talking about the range the first example I have taken is you need to add one to every item in a list okay this is our uh, so in a simplest way we can use for loop x in l and then uh, we use augmented assignment uh, to do this operation so then you got finally the summation of all is 6 so then the range or len combination can produce the required indexes for us so there this is another way of uh, doing so for and in so range of uh, length l so l list we have 1 2 to 5 so now here what we are doing is we are adding 1 to each and every item of that list using index position i okay then we will move on to another most neglected but important uh, topic that is zip zip is a parallel traverse traversal tool parallel traversal tool so don't forget that it's very important tool so now what it does is it zip up the parallel items of the following lists okay so now let's begin so l1 again a generator function got typecasted into list that's 1 to 5 and then l2 is another list that's 5 to 9 now i want to chip l1 comma l2 again i have told you chip is also a generator object so it's it it actually chipped then you have to use some iterator to look into those uh, values so now i used typecasting using list now i will make tuples of list now wedded with the for loop it supports parallel iteration also now we will wed this uh, zip with for, for loop and we will see what magics we can do okay so now for keyword and then in loop variable i have taken a tuple tuple of uh, variables tuple of two target uh, variables and then in and zipped i have zipped the both uh, lists now what i want to return no here i am printing but what i want to print is x comma y then x plus y so it is parallel uh, traverse, uh, traversing so it fetches x from first loop and x1 from the first loop first list and y1 from the uh, second list same x2 from the first list y2 from the second list x3 from the first list and y3 from the second list and it uh, it adds to each and then it will give the result so this is how it works so this is very powerful tool zip is very powerful tool now you can zip three tuples together so same thing you just follow the same thing you have three tuples that's t1 t2 3 t3 just zip all three together all three together and what you get is another list of tuples that is one four seven that is the first tuple because that that happens with the first uh, parallel travels traversal and then second second one is two five eight and then third one is three six nine so this is how that zip works now we can also zip uh, strings but the case is when unequal len strings are zipped the resultant the resultant takes the length of the shortest uh, string let's see so i have one shiva krishna and other one is bolenath bolenath let's see 
what would be the length of our string it is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so this is of boolean math so what it has done s b h h i o v l it's parallel traversing then let's look into some of the bonus examples i have specially coded uh, these examples to show it to you so this is uh, this is how uh, powerful uh, our for loop uh, and then while loop and then condi conditionals so conditionals we will once we finish this for and while we will look into conditionals also in uh, uh, next uh, session so here uh, so we have uh, a for loop with this for loop actually we can make uh, so this kind of uh, shapes see how nice it is and then I'll give five see that's good then another so here uh, I want to make a big shape uh, uh, using name so this is how I have made a nice shape out of it uh, so depends upon so number of uh, uh, how many rows of special design you want so depends upon your rows that size can be increased I am giving 56 now the things so I'll give 12 and let's see how it goes what happened oh mm. okay next uh, this is a different type of uh, design we got you see how nice it is and I'll give just three and see the fantastic design so that's like that you can make uh, the design the way you want the next one is a different way of creating and a triangle I have made triangle a nice triangle with our name and here create a gradually decreasing pattern and uh, I'll give 7 see how nice it is the design fantastic M shape create a triangular pattern I'll give 5 yes nice and finally a rhombus rhombus uh, a good one so this is how we can use these uh, loops you can make shapes you can make logics you can you can actually see so in reality without these loops you cannot do a lot of functions for example a IOT project which are uh, which I am working almost every module consists of loops without loop it is impossible to uh, run a project so that's how it's powerful so now we will move on to conditional statements I have told you the powerful tools are uh, while loop for loop and now the conditional statements it's very important that's why we, we will be talking about this now now so we'll begin with an if statement an if statement is written by using the keyword if okay now a is equals to 100 b is equals to 158 now the case is if is our keyword and then you have a test case if b is greater than a then print b is greater than a that's what yes it is greater than a that's why it, it's got uh, printed next thing is the elif keyword is python's way of saying if the previous condition were not uh, true then try this condition let's see. now we are using one more uh, compound statement in addition to 
if we are using one more compound statement that is uh, elif if b greater than a print b is greater than a elif a is equals to a is double equals to b then print a and b are equal let's see now a and b are equal or not it's equal it is 56 and 56 that's good now we will add one more uh, keyword that is else keyword what else keyword uh, does the else keyword catches anything which isn't caught by preceding conditions preceding conditions for if and elif so that's what the purpose of uh, else it catches anything which isn't caught by the preceding conditions now let's work it out so the first keyword and then the first test case if this is true then print b is greater than a if l if a double equals to b then print a and b are equal if neither that nor this then you have to find an another way that is our else that is a is greater than b if nothing works then this goes so that's how a complete conditional statement consists of so it consists of if keyword elif and else total three compound statement it has now you can also have an else without the elif that is also possible here we will have a two conditional statements that's it so and one is if this is not uh, true then directly go for else and uh, print whatever is mentioned there so that's the two conditional uh, keyword statement and there are different ways of writing if so one is a compound way of writing like a header and then colon and for, for followed by your uh, print statement so but you can write uh, if statement in a single line also okay so if you have only one statement to execute you can put it on the same line as the if statement if it is only one line if it is more than that then anyway you have to go for the compound only but here i have only one that's if a greater than b then print a is greater than b that's it i don't want to include anything else so now of course i, I can include the uh, other aspects also so now shorthand if else now if you have only one statement to execute means inside there are not much of complications if it is not a complex uh, loop then you can write it in a single line one for if and one for else you can put it all on the same line see here this example a is equals to 4 b is equals to triple 4 now print a this is how we write if you have if you want to include else also and uh, write a single conditional statement or if else short hand statement so print a if a greater than b else print b that's it print a if a greater than b else print b so this is the shorthand uh, notation for the if else statement but uh, if you can use it only in uh, special cases not for all then you can also have a multiple else statements on the same line okay so here it is that example a 330 b 330 print a if a greater than b so your if conditional if statement is over then you go for the else else print is equals to this then again one more uh, if statement if a double is equals to b else print b so here this is our first if statement then else print this is another statement then if 
a double is equals to b else so that's how so that's how it actually works so now we will move on to logics or logical operators those are the first one is and because this is also very much helpful in uh, writing uh, conditional statements so the first one is and the and the and keyword is a logical operator and is used to combine conditional statements so if you have two conditional statements that's what i am saying if you this shorthand notation can be written only for the one conditional statements if you have two conditional uh, two conditions two tests two tests in that case you cannot uh, write in a shorthand you have to go for the compound only because this is first test one test and this is test two so these are the two tests if you have two tests you cannot go for the shorthand notation so you, you have to go with the uh, uh, compound one only so here I have first test a greater than b and c greater than a if both tests if both tests are proven then only it will be the both conditions are true that will be printed then we have r keyword the r keyword is a logical operator again and is used to combine conditional statements with a different logic with a different logic see test if a is greater than b or if a is greater than c again this is the first test and then this is second test if any one of this logic is true if any one of this logic being logic is being proven true then it will print at least one of the condition is uh, true so now thus far we have seen uh, if if else if lf else and then uh, logical uh, operators and and or now we will move on to nested ifs how uh, we can nest one if into another if you can have a if statements inside if statements this is called a nested if statements so this is the example x is equal to 41 okay first we want to know if x is greater than 10 this is our first test then print about 10 again you go inside the nested loop if x greater than 20 means first it will check this condition if this is not true then only it will go down if x is greater greater than 20 then print and also about 20 if if this else else and final one is else so here what happens here if x greater than 10 is not true then it will not go into the loop at all so this will never be executed uh, if and only if this is uh, true then it goes to the next stage in that loop if this is also being proven true then it will come out of the loop or if is not greater than 20 then whichever is left if it is 25 something like that it will go to the else so that's how it works at in a state if and we will discuss uh, about the past statement pass uh, statement so if statement cannot be empty but if you for some reason have an if if have an if statement with no content put in the pass statement to avoid getting an error we have discussed enough about uh, this the pass statement so with this uh, this session is 
has come to an end so i would like to request you to uh, do enough practice uh, on uh, uh, for loop while loop and then conditional statements and then logical operators so in addition to that just keep watching my videos and keep following uh, liking my liking my videos and keep spreading the word uh, to your friends so that everybody can get benefit and uh, so for now bye bye tata and see you again in another session.